Hey guys, what's happening? So, I've been wanting one of these for a while and finally got it. Got an AXA tool post for my uh, Craftsmath Lathe. So, I know a few hundred people have subscribed to my channel recently for the CB radio stuff. And you guys probably don't see this angle of the garage. Like, you don't see the machine, little mini, mini, like the machine shop side of the garage I have here. Um, and the 3D printers and their stuff. I mean, usually I'm doing videos in this direction on my electrical test bench. Um, but I, yeah, I do have a little machine shop, a little where I kind of design stuff, prototype stuff, the 3D printers. I design 3D printers, mess with those things, build them, fix them. I do fix them for businesses, uh, you know. Commercial. I used to kind of. The, I used to do personal 3D printers, but I just don't have time. I'm busy with IT work. And I, I don't have time to fix the personal ones. But if they're big enough and they're, you know, I, I can make enough money on, on repairing them, uh, then I'll do that. But so let me show you the uh, little quick sh shot of the. So I got a, a like a I, all these. I made videos about all this stuff that I got. This is a uh, like a mill, like a round call mill here that's converted to CNC. Um. CNC router. I got all the stuff super cheap on OfferUp. These were all OfferUp scores. 800 bucks. I, I Probably a couple of grand I got all this stuff. That's a Sugami uh, heavy duty lathe. Trucker lathe. That's coming converted to CNC as you can see with the screen. Um, and I bought this probably less than a year ago. A year ago maybe. And I kind of restored it. It was pretty messy. I painted it, restored it. But um, you know, one of the things I wanted to do was get a tool post. So, right now it has the stock, like, they call this like a lantern tool post. Um, but they're not very rigid, and they're kind of a headache because if you want to change tools, you have to totally, like, reset everything. So, it's almost like you lose your zero. You lose your, 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 your the height. So, um, I wanted to try the uh, AXA. I mean, I got a really good deal on it. eBay. So, here it is. Pretty heavy, actually. Um, I think it was like 80, but this was a really good deal. I mean, I've, I've been looking for it since the, the moment I bought that lathe, the, one of these AXA, AXA tool post things. Um, so it was like 80 bucks, and it had like a, all the different attachments. Um, four different things, let me get them out. But besides the, the attachments, I think it comes like a knurling tool, a couple of boring bars and boring bar holders, and. But I also, for 40 bucks, also a really good deal, I got five of these. Um, they were called 250-102, so I'm pretty much going to have enough tool holders to hold, like, all my tools. Um, and the lathe tool holders, I, the lathe tools I have are from my little small like, mini mill or mini lathe that I bought. Another offer up score that I got rid of. Well, I got rid of it when I got the Craftsman Atlas lathe. So let me open this up and we'll go take a look at it. Hey, this looks pretty good, actually. It's super heavy. Um... So, I did a lot of reading. Like, I've done a lot of research on these. And they sell the cheap and cheaper ones that are the piston style. But everything I've heard is the piston ones, they don't hold them securely on there. So you want the wedge style. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive, but like I said, the other ones, they want to wiggle around, you know, wobble around a little bit. They don't want it not securely on there. So, it should come with the, this little bar here. I'll open that up. And then it should have a mounting plate, but I'm going to have the machine to get on there. Um, okay, so that's where it should go on the top there. So what I was saying is I have to machine this. Um, just take this thing off here. I have the machine. Yeah, you can see how the, the lantern post is. I mean, it just doesn't seem like it would be very rigid. But So I have to machine this plate down to fit that thing right there. So this bottom plate right here, which comes off. Maybe I can get it off there, but I have, to, I have to take that off and I have to machine it or get something that will fit in there. Right. I think it looks pretty good. It should fit. I mean, that's the center line right there. So, right there. So, that should be like almost like right in the center. So, we're, or should we do it the center line? Um, right. most, I'm, I'm assuming this is metric. So, 14 millimeter. Just the bolt that comes through there. <clears throat> All right, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna cut this or machine something smaller. I'm 
I even have, well, I'm going to look at my, I might have something that might fit in there, possibly. All right, so I could use like a little T-nib, but, and then like re-thread it, M14, but I want to get more, I'm worried about if I clamp down too much on this, it's going to break, break this cast iron here. So, well, I guess I'm going to have to machine it. Okay, so I made some marks here. So, I'm going to use, I'm going to cut it on the size, uh, I'm going to take off my little end mill here, I'm going to put a shell cutter in here, or a shell cutter, that way I can get some more material off faster. Last night, but I I'm kind of ran out of light here for today. But um, I was working on the Bronco today. But uh, all right, so I got to go back. I got to change my um, what's it called, like shell mill, and uh, put my end mill back in there. And I got to cut the slots off. But remember that the the goal was to keep as much meat on this thing as possible to evenly distribute the the load. And blew it. Get that in there tight. So I'm gonna use like gun blue, and I'll do that right now, fast. That way it doesn't rust. What the bluing does is it puts like an oxide layer on the outside of the seal. It's kind of like this right here. It's like black oxide. <sighs> Old oxo blue I have here. But any sort of bluing stuff should work. If I can get on there, and you'll see. See how quickly it turned dark. So it's going to create like an oxidized layer on the, on the metal. I do a lot of gunsmithing and stuff too. So, um, which I don't usually make YouTube videos about it because it's YouTube like, will like demonetize the channel. Alright. Alright, there it is. Blued. So I'm going to actually rub it down some oil. Alright, get that on like that. Try to center. Get the cap on. Yeah, I'm not going to test the lathe. I mean, just basically it's a tool post. Really, this video is just to show you guys what it looks like on a this sort of lathe. This is a 12-inch lathe. So I'm actually going to get in probably a different truck for this, but so height-wise, it should be perfect right in the center. Let me grab a post. Like I said, I'm not going to make any cuts, but I mean, just basically cutting chips. But yeah, this is this is like the perfect height. The AXA is like the perfect height for the Craftsman 12-inch. So because it's like right in the center here, so I have adjustability up and down, so that's perfect. All right, All right I'm going to put some more and put my other tools on there. All right, cool. Got all organized. So like when I designed these inserts, in this case I knew I'd be doing this eventually, that's why I made them for this size. So they fit in there like that. Point bar is a little bit longer, but you have know, yeah, like the knurling tool. Actually, I had a brutal nearly until too. But cut off the board. This one did the boring. I didn't realize the boring bar would be this big. So, <clears throat> all right. So, if you're wondering, you saw the AXA, or you have one of these 12 inch uh, lays. I mean, this thing, the AXA is perfect for it. So, all right, cool. Kind of got a sore throat. We got some Santa Ana winds here. So, all right, awesome.